Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines US drone strike kills at least 10 Afghan civilians in Kabul. Indian farmers protest police brutality as struggle crosses 9 months. Hundreds of Palestinians hold protests against Israeli siege of Gaza. Thousands march in the US to demand protection of voting rights. And Bolivian rights body warns of plan to break coup leader Johnny Nanez out of prison. In our first story at least 10 Afghan civilians have been killed after a US drone strike in Kabul on August 29th. As per reports all victims belong to the same family. Relatives said that the deceased were near their car when the strike hit a nearby vehicle. Afghan media also reported that several houses had been destroyed. The US Central Command has announced on Sunday that a strike had destroyed an Islamic state car bomb. This was the second strike conducted by the US after the Kabul airport blast. The first was conducted in the Nangarhar province. A Taliban spokesperson stated that three civilians had been injured. Nearly 170 Afghan civilians were killed after the blast outside the airport's Abbey Gate last week. However, eyewitnesses told BBC that a significant number were killed after being shot by US and allied forces in the chaos. Distraught relatives search Kabul's morgues looking for their loved ones. This baby you managed to save? Yeah, yeah. But there's another baby amongst those killed, Mohammad Niazi. a taxi driver from London who had traveled to Kabul to try and help his family get inside the airport his eldest daughter and youngest child are still missing his wife was also killed his brother was at the airport alongside him i saw some small children on the river it was so bad it it, it was dome day for us many of those we meet say their relatives weren't killed in the blast but by firing in the confusion afterwards they believe by foreign soldiers somehow i i saw the american soldier and 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 beside this there were turkish soldier so the the fire come from the bridges like the towers from the soldiers yeah from the soldiers america's department of defense didn't reply to our request for comment the suicide bombing claimed by the islamic state group would have ripped through the densely packed crowd causing panic IS has repeatedly launched devastating attacks in the city the blast has left 2-year-old mohammed reza fighting for his life this looks set to be one of the deadliest incidents ever in this horrific conflict so many of the victims those who had worked with the international community noor mohammed had been employed alongside american forces the guy has served us army for years and the reason he lost his life he wasn't killed by taliban he wasn't killed by isis us army start shelling how can you be sure because of the bullet the bullet went inside of of his head next to right here near to his ear he didn't he didn't have he doesn't have any injury these are noor mohammed's eight children he had hoped to give them a better life instead this afternoon they said a final goodbye those killed in this awful attack were trying to escape years of violence in afghanistan instead they became the latest victims in a country torn apart by bloodshed several rockets were fired towards the hamid kanzai airport in kabul on august 30th some of them struck the salim karwan neighborhood a us official told reuters that five had been intercepted Local media reported that the rockets had been launched from a vehicle and hit several parts of the capital. The Islamic State once again claimed responsibility for the attacks. Meanwhile, aid agencies have continued appeals for countries to keep their borders open for refugees. In our next story, hundreds of farmers held a demonstration in the Indian state of Haryana on August 30th. They had gathered to denounce a brutal police crackdown over the weekend. Farmers were protesting a meeting held by the ruling far-right Bharatiya Janata Party on Saturday. However, Police soon beat and charged the protesters leaving at least 10 injured. In response, farmers across several districts in Haryana blocked roads and highways on Saturday. Outrage grew after videos showed an official instructing police to hit farmers on their heads. Photos on social media later showed several farmers with injuries to their faces. Protests spread to the neighboring state of Punjab as well on Sunday with people blocking highways for 2 hours. The Samyukt Kisan Morcha or the Joint Farmers Front announced that protests had been held in 250 sites. Demonstrations at various toll booths continued in Haryana. A leader of the Bharatiya Kisan Union or the Indian Farmers Union announced later that a farmer had died. So Shilkajal reportedly suffered a heart attack after being heavily injured by the police on Saturday. 
Farmers are now demanding the resignation of Haryana's chief and deputy chief ministers. They have also demanded that officials responsible be charged for Sushil Kajal's death. They are also calling for a social boycott of the officers responsible for the violence. We now go to Palestine where Israel conducted several airstrikes on the besieged Gaza Strip on August 29th. It claimed that Palestinians had launched incendiary balloons during the protests at the enclave's border. The missiles hit central Gaza and agricultural land near the town of Beit Hanun. The attack followed a fresh round of protests at the Gaza-Israel border or barrier on Sunday. Hundreds of protesters had gathered to demand that the 14-year-old siege be lifted. Similar protests organized by Hamas and other Palestinian factions were held on Saturday. However, Israeli forces filed tear gas and stun grenades and live rounds. At least 11 Palestinians were injured, out of whom three sustained gunshot wounds. The Gazan Health Ministry also announced the death of a 12-year-old child on Saturday. Omar Hassan Abu Nail was shot by Israeli forces during a protest on August 21st. He was among the 40 Palestinians injured that day. As protests continued on August 29th, Israeli forces opened fire and deployed tear gas once again. Gazan officials have stated that around 30 Palestinians were injured over the weekend. Protests will now continue throughout the week to demand that the blockade be lifted. Meanwhile, Egyptian officials will reopen the Rafah border crossing with Gaza on Sunday. The crossing is the only route available to Gazans that is not controlled by Israel. The crossing had been closed by Egypt to reportedly pressure Hamas to call off the protests. Our next story is from the US where thousands of people took to the streets in major cities on August 28th. The protests were called to demand that the federal government protect voting rights. An estimated 20,000 people were present at the rally in the capital of Washington, D.C. August 28th also marked 58 years since Martin Luther King Jr. delivered a historic I Have a Dream speech. Saturday's rally was called the March on Washington for Voting Rights to commemorate the day. It was organized by the Drum Major Institute, March on, National Action Network and the Service Employees International Union. Over 200 other civil society groups and trade unions endorsed the countrywide call to protest. The rallies on August 28th took place a day after the state of Texas passed new voting restrictions. The bill was passed to the Republican-held State Congress and will now move to the Senate. It will limit the mailing of absentee ballots and ban provisions like 24-hour voting. As on August 28th, 18 states across the US have enacted 30 legislations that will restrict voting. These include obstacles to early voting and access to ballot boxes. Activists argue that these laws will disproportionately impact the marginalized and working class communities. Protesters are demanding that lawmakers pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Amendment Advancement Act. Republicans have already threatened to block the bill in the Senate. And for our final story, we go to Bolivia where a plan to break Johnny and Anes out of prison was made public last week. Anes took power as Bolivia's de facto leader after the 2019 coup against President Evo Morales. She was arrested in March on charges of terrorism, sedition and conspiracy. Bolivian prosecutors announced additional charges of genocide against Anes on August 20th. The Permanent Assembly of Human Rights of Bolivia warned last week that Anes might try to escape. Here is a video feature on the case. A plan to break former de facto president Janine Añez out of prison by the main opposition leaders with help from some embassies in Bolivia was made public by the Executive Committee of the Permanent Assembly of Human Rights of Bolivia. In a statement, the organization said that it denounces before the Bolivian people that a possible escape of Ms. Janine Añez Chavez, who is being held in the Miraflores Women's Prison, is underway. It is important to note that Añez tried to run away from Bolivia twice before her arrest after the left government took office. The first attempt was on November 23, 2020, when the process to seek justice for the numerous crimes committed by former ministers and officials of the coup and salt government had just begun under the democratically elected government of President Luis Arce. The second time was on March 13, after the prosecutor's office ordered her detention and charged her with terrorism, sedition, and conspiracy concerning the plotting and execution of the coup d'etat in November 2019. Añez, who illegally seized power after Morales' departure and declared herself interim president in a session of Congress that met without quorum, also faces charges of breach of duties and resolutions contrary to the Constitution and the laws. Meanwhile, Janine Añez was in the news last week for her suicide attempt in jail on August 21st. The mainstream media amplified the pleas of her children and allies, asking that she be transferred to house arrest on medical grounds. Añez, who was responsible for the massacre of 37 people in Zacala and Zincata and the persecution and torture of hundreds of other people, was arrested in March of this year. The suicide attempt happened three days after the interdisciplinary group of independent experts of Bolivia came up with a report on acts of violence and human rights violations committed during the 2019 coup d'etat in Bolivia. It was also the day after the prosecutor's office charged her with genocide that could punish her with 20 years in prison. 
the primary targets of the coup regime were those who took to the streets in rejection of the coup and in support of the democratically elected socialist government of the then president Evo Morales. The report also confirmed that the violence was characterized by ethnic and racial discrimination. It is divided in eight chapters and 471 pages long and a product of eight months of investigation. During these months, the experts interviewed 400 victims, victims associations, civil society organizations, witnesses, recorded their testimonies and analyzed over 120,000 files to clarify the truth. The report details the social and political climate that preceded the general elections in October 2019, as well as the climate that succeeded the elections after they were contested for alleged irregularities and forced the resignation of former President Morales. Several human rights and social leaders and government officials consider that the report will be fundamental in judicial investigations that are already underway and will open up a new stage to justice, reparation, and reconciliation in the country. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.